Also, another reason why fundamental analysis screws people over is because people get into in, into this thing. Okay, right. So. The Bank of England did or said this, and so this has gone up here, blah, blah, blah. And so you, en you end up always chasing history. Because one of the things I, I, I see a lot with new traders is massive spike, up or down, or it does this. And then the next qu few questions you'll hear for the next hour is, what, what, a WTF? Why did that, that do that? Why did it do this? It was supposed to go up when it went down. What, why? And then you yourself will spend the next two hours Googling why did euro dollar crash today 2017 or whatever and like that is the most useless use of your time ever you don't need to know why stuff happened it's irrelevant it's in the past um so it's it's just this it's a negative loop so to speak um which has no positive outcome finding out why it happened because the reason why something happened doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen again i mean also, the market interpretation changes all the time. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, te and old correlations are breaking down. So historically, when stocks go up, gold and silver go down, vice versa. Does that happen now? No, it, because everything's so intertwined. And the thing is, news is slow and imperfect when it comes to trading. So the news that you're s googling and trying to find out what the hell just happened. You're reading stuff from a journalist who doesn't know, have a scooby about the markets, or a journalist that has heard something from a trader. That trader may be shit. Um, and also, things you, s <clears throat> analysis you see um, from other websites, you don't know what style of trader they are. So they could be saying something which is completely valid for their way of trading. They may be a day trader, so their time frame is like, oh yeah, it should go up. And so you go up, but what that person actually means is, yeah, it should go up in the first five minutes and then bomb it for the rest of the day. But for him, because he's probably only scalping like 10 pips a day or whatnot, it, yeah, he was right. But there's us on the daily charts going, oh yeah, it's going to go up. And then we're like, what the... So yeah, the stuff you see is, is slow, um, especially in the world of high frequency trading where um, some HFT firms place a million trades uh, a morning. Some, some HFT, they just trade in the morning and it's normally on the opening, they place a million in the space of a couple of hours. And they're acting in milliseconds. There's a really good video somewhere in the portal of someone going into an HFT firm, and there's this one guy, he wasn't even a trader, he's more of a computer, like, whatever. And um, they're looking at this company, and they said, yeah, at 10 o'clock, this company's going to release an RNS, like uh, an announcement of their uh, quarterly earnings or, or whatnot. And, and then there's like a countdown, and then three, two, one, and the moment it hit 10 o'clock, his screens went and lines did this. And he's like, oh yeah, we've just placed 10,000 trades, like it, within like, like that. And the thing is what happened is that these HFT algorithms, they have the fastest interconnections connections that you can get. They have a direct feed with the exchanges. So the moment that a news announcement or the, their quarterly earnings or whatever goes out, their robot, their algorithm has read and dissected that whole PDF in a matter of microseconds, or no, milliseconds, <coughs> And then the computers figured out, okay, this, this report is bad, let's short the shit out of it. 10,000 short orders, boom. And so how are you as a day trader from your house going to get in front of that? You can't. So it's a bit of a mugs game, I believe, day trading. Um, obviously, we're not talking about day trading. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so yeah, and also news is imperfect as well, as I mentioned.